This is the Light S Xiaomi 4x4, one of the first, if not the first, maglev 4x4 in the world. This cube has a bunch of other features in its mechanism and creating this puzzle is way harder than it looks. For the past 6 years or so, many new technologies hit speed cubes. This included a floating stockless center design, elasticity adjustment systems, maglev tensions, and many more. And while cool, most of these features mostly appear in 3x3, in some cases 5x5, but even layered puzzles have much more challenges to face. Most even cubes are actually just odd cubes, but they hide their middle layer. This means that it's possible for the middle layer to misalign and jam the entire puzzle. And for this reason, extra mechanisms are put in place to prevent this from happening. Top two alignment mechanisms are the Ishin and the X-Cube. I'll talk about the X-Cube first. The X-Cube basically uses a circle. This circle is actually locked to the core. Around this circle, we have a square. This square piece is able to move when you turn the center. The reason why the circle has locked to the core is because there's a bump attached to one part of this circle. This bump will hook into this corresponding shape on the centerpiece. And because of that, whenever the centerpiece moves, it will drag the entire inner layer along with it. The X-Cube alignment mechanism is the most dominant alignment mechanism to ever be seen. And it's basically everywhere in most 4x4s. It has one major limitation, which is the fact that the centerpiece must lock to the core. The reason for that is as usual, the bump is not allowed to move, so this entire circular piece which carries the bump is not allowed to move. And, and if the bump moves to a different location, and another bump is still in its original location, now the middle layer is locking to both the third and the second, and you basically just can't do inner layer turns. This would mean that a floating center design, such as the one found in the Guoguan Ye Xiao, is technically impossible. Right here, you're seeing the Yixin 4x4. There is a block that is permanently attached as part of the core. This block actually hooks onto the second layer pieces. But when the second layer turns, it drags the whole core with it, whereas the core will never follow the third layer. Because the contact point is not like reliant on the centerpiece, it's reliant on just this block and this contact with the second layer. This means that technically you can remove this stock and expand the outer pieces to occupy the space below. But Ishin has another problem, which is the second layer must always be bigger and deeper than the outer layer, and you can't really make the outer layers very deep. And the kind of a mashup between both mechanisms, I'm not going to completely review what my secret is, but you can tell that my center actually has no stock, and you can see the screw from here. My cube actually has a double anchor, and the corner does descend deep into the cube. In addition to utterly breaking the limitations of even layer alignment mechanisms, the stockless floating design of the Xiaomi brings with it a whole bunch of features. The stockless center design shrinks the fat middle layer down to the thickness of a screw, allowing more space to have bigger outer pieces and more stability. The maglev design eliminates contact between the spring, screw and center piece to reduce friction, which goes well with the floating design. Maglev also reacts differently from the spring. Springs obey Hooke's law, which gives you a force proportionate to how much you compress them. Magnets follow an inverse square law. Pushing a pair of repelling magnets closer gives you a force that increases slowly at first, but the increase gets progressively faster. This theoretically should allow for a faster cube when everything is aligned, but if you make a mistake and need to corner cut, the centers get pushed closer together and the cube gets more stable. Complete removal of the center stop means that there is no space for a spring or pair of repelling ring magnet to be placed into the cube. However, the Xiaomi has another major difference compared to other 4x4s. Most even cubes use an odd cubes mechanism, but they completely chop off the heads of anything belonging to the middle layer, and then they expand the outer pieces to cover the gap. The light S Xiaomi, however, only cuts off half the head instead of the full head, which solves the space problem. But to fully capitalize on this feature, I went with a magnetization scheme of a 5x5 to evade the even cube polarity issue entirely. Usually with most cubes, the inner layer needs to use two magnets glued in reverse orientation relative to each other to prevent a polarity mismatch. This often adds a need to use two different magnet strengths so the inners don't become overpoweringly strong compared to the outers. But with a magnet scheme of a 5x5, there's no need to use double magnets as it is easier to achieve a consistent magnet strength for both inner and outer layers. The edge magnets are also at the same height as the space between the maglev magnets. With careful selection of magnet polarity, this can be used to cause a repulsion whenever a layer passes 45 degrees, adding a boost of speed. This is similar to how the core corner magnet and maglev systems repel at 45 degrees. Due to how FDM printing works, this nozzle is going to print plastic on top of an already printed layer, 
So if there's no support underneath, you basically can't print anything. So any piece with an overhanging part would need a support structure below. And support structures themselves are wasted plastic because at the same time, like you pluck out the supports, there could actually be markings left over. So what I did instead was I split the piece in a, in a design that's pretty much identical to that of a stickerless cube. And the same can be said for the corners. This applies even if the piece is hollow because the inner wall is going to be parallel to the outer wall and there will still slant under 45 degrees and you can basically chunk out an entire inner area of the cube and still not require any support to print. But unfortunately, I only have one row of black PLA and not six rows of different colours. The outer layer has the same soft glidey feel as the Siu 5x5 and the RS3M, both of which are maglev and also contain a core corner magnet system that has an opposite polarity leading to repulsion at 45 degrees. Of course, the extent of repelling at 45 degrees varies with the mass-produced plastic being the most successful, followed by the SLS printed puzzle, and finally the FDM printed puzzle. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this is FDM printed, the texture is just way crunchier and scratchier than the other two, but you can still feel that the maglev magnets are exerting less pressure on the cube compared to what a spring would have done. The inners are also a little slower than the outers, but not by much. Corner cutting isn't too great, you can do just about like here forward and about here reverse, even though I make the holes really big, but I would say the same about pretty much most of my other 3D printed puzzles. The Seal May 4x4 is also a lot less stable than the Seal C 5x5, mostly due to the lack of double anchor. I actually designed my 5x5 to contain the double anchor mechanism and it's a feature that I wanted to feature in the entire Seal series. But at the same time, I wanted my 4x4 to have a simpler mechanism that's easier to build and assemble and on second thoughts, I should have just kept the integrity of the series and, and built a double center into this 4x4 because it's really unstable and this instability combined with the stiffness of the material and its lack of corner cutting does lead to a lot of catches. And a fair comparison with mass-produced puzzles is not going to be possible because like 3D printing is just much less accurate and the material quality is, isn't as good. However, this is still the best one out of all three of my 3D printed 4x4s. Version 1 just directly copying the Huachong Mac but adapting it to be spherical which is not a good idea and this puzzle is just really unstable. While the version 2 has a bunch of measurement mistakes that cause the screws to unscrew themselves and the puzzle explodes and, and it also has a really bad magnet choice making it so strong that it's pretty much unusable. With this one, I can at least sub one. Even though the other two are SRS printed, which is a far more expensive, much higher quality and much more accurate method of printing, this FDM printed puzzle has beaten the odds and outperformed both of its predecessors. In conclusion, this puzzle isn't worthy to take over as my main speed cube right away. It's probably going to rank as bad as the original Shang 4x4, but as with all my other 3D printed speed cubes, or at least most of them, it brings new ideas to the table and proves concepts. In this case, it shows that a floating center design and maglev tensions are possible in an even layer puzzle. Plus, it also expands a lot of the more try Tian Ma X3 stout repulsion with like carefully chosen magnet polarities to puzzles bigger than a 3x3 and this can potentially spell the future for 4x4 since there hasn't been much variation in existing mechanisms 